Hey there, Mission Control. Well, today it's fitting that I'm in my swim trunks, got my hat on. The sun is really quite quite powerful today. Uh, it's about 90 degrees Fahrenheit out, and it's probably very, uh, what is it, uh, paradoxical, I think is the right word, uh, that I'm out here today talking to you about heating. Um, and just Maybe paradox isn't the right word, but there's some really cool word that I'm thinking of, and I can't remember. Anyway, we'll go with it. Uh, it's pertinent because today it's so hot and warm, uh, but in about, what is it? It's uh, almost the end of July, so August, September, October, November. In less than four months, the temperature is going to drop from 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're going to be averaging about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, once that November 11th date gets here, it's going to drop like a rock. So today I wanted to talk to you about the heating trade study. Uh, last time we spoke, it was about insulation and how every dollar we spend on insulation will save us quite a few dollars in heating costs. So I wanted to start out here today with one of the heating options that we have. And let me quickly kind of recap. If you're brand new to the channel, uh, last year we had a horrendous winter, our first winter with the facility up and running. Uh, we used plastic as our insulation over lanes two and three. And then we had uh, diesel-based uh, heaters, convection heaters, just uh, the, the torpedo heaters that you can buy for construction sites. And we ran those for 15 minutes uh, every hour for winter. Now, we started with a double-barrel wood stove and went with wood, but you can't keep up with the cold weather like that. We were out here twice a day shoving the, a 55-gallon barrel stove. Uh, full of wood and getting it going, uh, it, it couldn't even keep up with cold weather. So we turned that thing off, put the diesel heaters in, and we were fine after that. Uh, but <clears throat> this year we don't want to run uh, those heaters because they're not meant to be run indoors. We had quite a bit of soot over everything. It worked. It, it helped out in an emergency situation. We still have the heaters in case of an emergency. But, to, but this winter we want to not just survive, we want to thrive. So uh, we're going to spend quite a bit of money on insulation, uh, making sure we insulate the building as best we can so that we minimize the cost uh, to run heaters. Now, there's really three heaters that are an option, three heating types, I should say. Uh, electric heating, propane heating, and oil or diesel-based heating. Wood is off the table. Now, before you get all in a tiffy with me, the reason wood is off the table, off the table, excuse me, sorry for the wind, is because of storage and the amount of work you have to do to actually feed it. If we spent the money on a wood boiler, which would be by far the most efficient thing uh, that we could do as far as wood goes, we would have to have basically this entire area here, show you, all of this would have to turn into wood storage. We would have to have that much wood all the way down probably about, uh, I forget how many cords, it's over 20 cords of wood that we would have to have. I did do the calculations and um, that's a huge amount of storage, plus then you have to access all of that wood. So when there's four feet of snow out here, you've got to have a shed over all this wood so you can actually get to it or a bunch of tarps. And trust me on the tarps, this is not fun. Uh, not when there's four feet of snow on top of it. So I'm going to put that one off to the side there. We're going to take the double barrel wood stove that's in the building. We're going to get that out of there. And we're either going to fill in the hole or we're going to do something else with that hole. Right now, I don't know what, but the stove is going to come out. We're probably going to move it up to the shop. So wood is off the side. So let's look at propane, uh, oil base, and electric. If we go with propane heaters, insulation cost is $6,000 roughly. Uh, I called, got a bid on it, and what we'd end up doing is having two heaters. Let me turn the camera for you. So we would have a heater at this end and another heater all the way over at the other end. And the reason we want to have two heaters isn't because one heater can't do the job. It's because having two means if one goes down, the other one's still operational. So you have a backup. So that's one thing that we could do. Uh, propane is nice. Uh, it's clean burning. Both the propane heaters that we would put in, one on each side, would actually be um, vented. So probably like we did the chimney off the top of the building, we'd have the vent coming out, or we'd have to do a special build down low, depending on where we want to put the heaters at. Uh, each heater would be roughly 300,000 BTU, uh, which is more than the 70,000 BTU we need per hour, but those size of heaters are readily available, fairly affordable, 
uh, and they give us more oomph in case we need it. Now, based on consumption, we'd end up getting four 500-gallon uh, propane tanks. And where we put those at, I think they have to be at least 12 feet away from a structure. So we're looking at having to put tanks over here and tanks up in the front of the building in order to make them work. Now the hose for the propane truck is about 100 feet long. So as long as we have the microgreen road plowed, which we will, they'll be able to get out here and actually fill the tanks, um, which will last more than a month. That's important. How big those tanks are is very important because we can get it where our road is pretty tough to get down, significant amount of snow, uh, so that's a big problem. So we want to have enough storage on site in case something really bad happens and we need to go for a month without being filled. So that's why there's four of them. Um, the electricity required on the propane is very, very small, just a few amps per uh, propane heater when it's running. Uh, so we have plenty of energy to do that. The humidity challenge of propane isn't going to be an issue for, uh, for this installation because of the vent. If we didn't have a vent, if we were just doing convection where we just burn uh, the propane in the building, we would actually be adding quite a bit of humidity. I'm going to talk about humidity in a different video, but suffice it to say, in the winter, condensation is a problem and we have to deal with it. Last year we had the dehumidifier, this year we have the same, but depending on what we do for insulation and heating, we might have to change our humidity solution humidity management solution. So um, the pros of propane are that it's relatively inexpensive compared to oil or diesel. So uh, based on my research and calling the local propane company, propane is going to run anywhere from $1.50 to up to $2.50 uh, as we get further into winter and demand goes up. They can charge more. Uh, but it's still less than what diesel costs. Now, if you're following along and you're saying, well, yeah, it's still less, but diesel has a lot more BTU per gallon. That's true. I think uh, diesel has about 135,000 BTU per gallon, um, and then uh, propane has 90,000 BTU per gallon. What that means is for every gallon of diesel that you have, you get a lot more heat out of it than you would for the equivalent gallon, equivalent amount of uh, propane. But because the price is so different, Diesel is going to be up in the $3 per gallon range come the middle of winter. So depending on the pricing, propane actually ends up being more cost efficient by a few cents per gallon. And the amount of uh, propane that we're going to need, or diesel, is so significant that uh, just the little bit of price delta there, the few cents per gallon, really, really adds up. And I'm going to tell you about that as we get into it. So, the, uh, so low humidity low relative cost, uh, and cheap installation. Those are pretty basic. We could call $6,000, guy comes up here, he drops the tanks, boom, boom. He runs the uh, hose, I'll probably have to dig the trench. He installs uh, the units up high, professional installation. We have to cut through the building, but I got a plan for that to uh, vent it. Um, that's pretty, pretty easy. Let's move on to diesel or oil, heating oil, number one, number two, kerosene or diesel. Uh, that one, again, has more, more BTU per gallon. And the heaters are a little bit more expensive than propane, depending on which one you go with. Efficiency is very important. I found heaters that are roughly 80% efficient for around $2,000 to $3,000. Again, they're about the same price as the propane heaters. You would do the same thing. You would have one on this end, one on that end. That way if one goes down, the other one's still there and you can run it. Now with diesel or oil, you're going to have to get a really big tank and the re regulations for these tanks are significantly higher because you have the potential for a spill. So you have to get a double wall uh, tank that's certified because this is a business and it's going to get inspected. So we'll have to put a cement pad down in case there's leaks. You have to put that thing on top of it. But still, uh, compared to our next solution, it's less expensive to install all that, but it's more expensive than propane. So let's look at the values here. From a uh, heating per gallon, it's higher than propane. From a cost of insulation, it's higher than propane, but less than the next solution I'm going to talk about. Uh, for ease of installation, it's more difficult than propane, but less difficult than the next one that I'm going to talk about. So uh, diesel, not a bad solution. Let's move up to the front of the building because quite honestly, it's really hot standing right here. There is a little breeze. You're probably hearing it on the mic, but it's still really hot. So let's move up to the shade. 
Well, before I get uh, to the heating, kind of the different options and all, the third option there, uh, I wanted to stop by here and talk about insulation just one more time. I forgot to bring this up in the insulation trade. Um, it would be smart if I rip up the French drain <laughs> and then move this dirt away from the building and put a big sheet of plastic down, probably double, maybe triple it up. And oh, by the way, lots of plastic. So I don't have to buy it, just have to do this work. If I dig up the French drain, which, and save the rock, move the dirt away from the building, get the scraper blade, come in and scrape, scrape the dirt down a little bit, and then uh, put the plastic down tight up against the building, cut, get some new rock, and actually instead of dirt, have rock up against the building, pinching the plastic and the building fabric together, because the, the building has a big lip that that dirt is sitting on. Run the plastic down into the drain, back out and out over, probably about six to seven feet out. What that should do is move the frost line away from the building and give us more heat retention right here so that there's not a lot of heat loss coming right from the edge of the building. Another option that we've talked about in the past is to use foam board, but a subscriber brought up a good point that you run over foam board, even if it's buried, you're gonna crack it and you're gonna lose what you're trying to do. And we do run tractors through all sides of this building and into the building. So I think the triple, quadruple layer of plastic, since we have so much of it, would be a good thing to do. It's just a lot of work to do it. Another thing we could do is actually just take the pieces of plastic and not dig up the French drain, not dig up the dirt, put the plastic on top of it, bring in rock, put rock all the way out, perforate the plastic where the French drain is at, and then scrape off this dirt here. And we have to do this all the way around the building. Scrape off the dirt, put the plastic down, and cover the plastic up. Now that one I like because I don't have to dig up the French drain. And keeping the French drain right here, it gives us the last line of defense before um, water comes into the building. So I kind of like the French drain right here and it works really, really well. Last year worked great. Curious to know your thoughts. Should we A, dig up everything and put plastic down or B, put plastic down over the top of this, perforate it on top of the rock for the French drain, put more rock covering up the French drain and where the dirt's at currently on the building and then put the plastic under dirt out probably five, six feet or so. Curious to know your thoughts.